I want to thank our partners. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Renault Nissan, um, with, without which we're just a robot um, and a concept. And I think that um, you can see the Nissan car here. Uh, we, we were, uh, we're trying to make sure that you don't think this is the first car that's going to come out. Uh, we've had a lot of help from Nissan in understanding how to convert this car into electric, but this is not a prototype of their car, and I want to make sure that it's, uh, it's well understood up front. Um, but without the vision of Renault Nissan and the continued support, this would have not happened, and I want to thank them for, uh, for this kind of, uh, of great partnership that we have seen. Uh, obviously, Sharp Corporation, I don't know if you know that, but uh, all the power that we're drawing for this location is fed by uh, the uh, panels that you see outside, the solar panels that are on the outside of this tent. And uh, in effect, you're sitting in a virtual oil field, even though you don't sense it. Uh, when, uh, when you enter this location. The city of Yokohama for providing this beautiful location and the invitation and the, and the graceful hospitality that we've had. Uh, we wish we'd never have to unfold this tent, but um, it would be a temporary location. Hopefully the next time we come to install this would be a, uh, a fixed um, switching system here in the, in the city. Um, the vision of zero emission has been talked about for many years. We, uh, we actually know that uh, we are on an unsustainable path with what we do to the world with our cars. And yet none of us would give up their car in return for uh, a sustainable planet because our way of living has now been uh, extended by the range of cars, by the range of transportation. And so we are living in a conflicted world one in which we are dependent on oil, one in which we're polluting the world in which we live in, and one that is catering to our needs and desires as an economy, as a society. We looked at a variety of different models for zero emission cars, and yet none of them has seemed practical or affordable to date. Most zero emission cars have been uh, experimental in nature, have been small in volume, have been expensive to say the least, and definitely not convenient. And we were lacking those two elements, convenience and affordability, in order to make reality of zero, zero emission transportation. In order to do that, we have to change the paradigm, to change the way we are uh, we're looking at cars. And we have to do all that in the time in which the entire car industry is going through one of its worst times ever. In, in the last century, we can't remember a year like 2008 or 2009 in the car industry, where capacity is overflowing uh, with more than 30 or 40 million cars not being produced in factories around the world. As a matter of fact, it's an industry on a verge and in the need of reinvention. And so how do you reinvent in a, in a car economy, a car industry, while traveling at speeds towards a, a, a chasm unlike we've ever seen before? And how do you make an electric car that is convenient and affordable. We all see outside charge spots. You'll see them as you go outside, and we've all knew, we've all known for a long period of time that all we need is to connect the grid, the electric grid that, that brings light to homes, into the car. That last foot, the last meter of connection, was missing, and part of what Better Places proposed is to actually break the chicken and egg problem, to break the who goes first by putting massive amount of charge spots across a region. In effect, to make electricity ubiquitous for cars much as it is for any appliance in the home. But the second component, the yin and the yang of the charge spot was missing. And the second component is this device that you're seeing behind us, which provides cars the ability to continue to drive long distances beyond the range of a single battery without the inconvenience and in standing and charging for hours or even for 30 minutes at a time. And our view was that when you drive long distances, if you had to stop every hour and a half to charge for a half hour, you would use a bus instead of using a car. And so the goal that we've set to the teams, our teams, which have built this device, has actually been to make the switch of a battery 
faster than filling up gasoline. And our team, Yav was the, the head of engineering on this effort, has actually got two lines that they had to match. The first one was make sure the driver gets out of the battery switch before a driver goes out of a gas station. And the second goal was make sure that they can come out of the battery switch three times faster than you can come out of the gas station. Because if you can switch a battery three times faster than filling up on one tank of gasoline, then even if you, grow, if you go forever, batteries will be more convenient than gasoline cars. The team has done too good of a job. And what you'll see today is the first sub one minute, under one minute switch, which we actually had to slow down in order for you to actually see what's going on inside the machine. We have actually seen this device work at about 40 seconds in our shops. When you get to that kind of convenience, when you sit in the car and you feel nothing, and your car is effectively charged a minute later, there's a new era coming into the cars. Now all this era wouldn't have happened without one meeting in Davos. So I want to give due credit where credit is due. In 2007, President Shimon Peres of Israel had approached all the leading car makers in the world and asked them to build this car. Not one, but millions. Most told us that it's a crazy idea. Only one guy, Gonsan, said, we can build that car. Not only did Carlos go and say we can build a car, he said actually it makes more sense than building a gasoline car.